Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of our Community Access. This week, we will tell you about free meals donated by Ferndale EMS. Then, feature about K-9 Rescue League. Then, hometown pharmacy has changed owners. And finally, simple organics, traffic and pandemic. Information, all today on our Community Access. Welcome back. Ferndale EMS donated free meals to Oxford. With the story is our reporter, Alexis Ware. It's really important for the residents of Oxford to know that every Wednesday is Free Meal Wednesday here at the Oxford United Methodist Church right in the parking lot. And guess what? All you have to do is pull up. You do not have to, to register, you don't have to call, you don't have to shoot me a text, nothing. Just show up. We're there by 4.30, we start serving about 5.15 until the people or the food runs out. And today's donations was a special delivery from over 45 minutes away. It came from a pantry in Livonia that's not able to hold their, uh, their free meals program right now. So instead of it going to waste and expiring, um, it was passed along to all of us at the station, but you can only go through so many cans of applesauce before you got to pass on the love. That love made its way all the way back home. This is my daughter, and she has born and raised here in Oxford. She's been volunteering since she could walk, and she's done so many great things all her life, so it doesn't surprise me that she put this together to help us out when we need it the most. I'm very proud of her. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. It was, it was good to be part of it. It was weird driving my ambulance all the way back to Oxford, um, especially without a patient in the back, but it was... Yeah, we checked. There's nobody back no, there. No, there's no one back there. There's just a lot of fish sticks. Um, <laughs> but no, it was, it was a good trip, and I'm glad I got to do it for, her, for, for Oxford. Oxford native and alumnus Larissa Kruger says the donations included tons of canned goods. She says the best part was giving back. Every time I call my mom, she's at Meyer. Um, and so when I called her, I was actually at Meyer, and I had just spoken to Pam about this. And I said, hey, Mom, I think I have a donation of food coming for you. And she's like, what? And I said, yeah, I think we're going to try and fill up an ambulance and bring out, you know, we have a ton of food sitting at the station, and I think we're going to come drop it off. And it was kind of like I didn't realize what I was saying as I was saying it. But then she got really excited, and then I got excited, and then Pam and my, my mom were talking, which is really cool if you ask me. And it all happened in a week, so. Yeah. Well, like I said, the, we're, this is getting us through week to week, donations like this. And then it's going to be really crunch time in the middle of August. I mean, we're going to keep doing it, you know, and we still were relying on, on the community. But uh, I had no idea that I could reach out to Ferndale <laughs> and, and get this. So this has been great. I could go on and on, but she knows the value of volunteering. and stepped it up when the community asked for help and brought in her truck and it's, it's very cool. <laughs> it, was, it was nice especially with all this COVID nonsense going on you know we've been my job hasn't gotten any easier uh, whether I'm on the road or I'm in dispatch you don't know what's coming next thankfully it seems like things have calmed down a bit for us and after feeling powerless for so many months and there was only so much we could do it was nice to be able to bring the rig out and do something and have a little bit of power over something. Well, so. Exactly, and that's what I've said. With as busy as you guys have been, you could still find the time to help us out. And for goodness sake, she came from Ferndale. <laughs> You're not around the corner here at no. Fire Station 1. No, you came from Ferndale to yeah. do this. Yeah. And I, I couldn't be more pleased. I hope you tell your whole crew and Pam and, and her parents I will, yeah. how much we appreciate it. But this has come at a really crucial time because our numbers go up every week. And... Uh, we're, we've been, I've been doing a kind of a push in the community and people have really stepped up. I mean, we've gotten donations of food and money so we can buy the things we don't get. Well, the school program is going to end on August 19th. And that's when this, these kind of donations are going to become so very important because we're going to be out here. I, I wouldn't be surprised we're still out here in the fall and winter. Connie Miller, volunteer and organizer of Wednesday Free Mail, says although they received more donations, this doesn't put them ahead for next week. She says they give residents as much as they can. We try to accommodate everyone, and we get down towards the last few cars, and we're kind of getting creative because the point is to give it all away but not run out. And so far, we've been right on it. But we don't know from week to week because our numbers have gone up every week. So we just don't know, but we're going we're gonna to do the best we can. And people appreciate it. They come every week. We see new faces every week. Um, and we love doing it. We want to stop. We want reality to come back. Um, but we'll be here. 
we'll be here and keep on doing it. Miller says there's no definite end date to Free Mill Wednesdays. We'll stay here and do this as long as we can. So anybody out there watching, you know, you can always give me a call at 248-933-4579. And uh, if you've got anything, one can, one dollar, you become a part of the team. Nobody is exempt. No donation is too small. Thanks to Ferndale EMS. Next up, Alexis visit with the Canine Rescue League with a story about the epidemic with our dogs. When the pandemic hit, obviously we, we did close down at first. We shut down for about two weeks where we had only essential care workers coming in to take care of the dogs. Um, essential care included, sorry, <laughs> essential care included um, dog walkers as well. We have a lot of dog walkers as Jesse will be barking at them as they walk by. Um, to get the dogs out of their kennel so they don't go stir crazy. Um, we shut down for about two weeks and then we, we were able to organize a plan to be able to do adoptions because it's also not fair for the dogs to sit in kennels for extended periods of time if there are homes willing to adopt them. Um, so then we went into that action plan of coordinating how we're going to be able to do the adoptions. So instead of having open hours, we have people um, submit applications and then that way we can do a lot of our paperwork through the internet, through emailing it over, wrap it up. That way when you come to meet the dog, you're basically ready to go. So. Um, we were limiting our time to reduce exposure. Um, we have three adoption counselors that have been at the forefront through this whole thing. They're the ones vetting the applications, talking with people, scheduling the appointments, and meeting people here. Um, it, we allowed them to make that decision that if they felt comfortable doing that, if they weren't comfortable doing that, they did not have to do it. Um, it, they wanted to though. I mean, they're, they're heroes during all of this. They wanted to take, they were willing to take that risk and really use caution, use the social distancing, use, take on, some of them aren't very tech, tech savvy and trying to walk adopters through how to submit the application online, how to um, receive t um, PDFs, print them, fill them out and send them back. Um, we were also filling a lot of the paperwork out ourselves, just some information that the adopter was giving us so that we could avoid that passing the pen back and forth um, nonstop. Hubbard says the extra precautions they were taking didn't slow down adoptions. A lot of our dogs ended up being adopted, which was amazing because sometimes you have dogs, when you have so many dogs here, um, a few of them will get overlooked as if there's a, a better, better terminology, I don't know. Um, but. Um, a different dog available and a different dog might be overlooked and those dogs tend to get overlooked more often. So with the fewer dogs we had here, those dogs were getting a chance. They were getting an opportunity to be seen and people were falling in love, with, in love with them and that was incredible. Um, the dogs were also getting adopted quickly. Our adoption counselors still feel that they are, they felt they were giving a better experience to the adopter as well. Um, when we have open hours, people were coming in. Sometimes on a Saturday you could have 10 different families waiting in a small room when you first walk in, which isn't the best setup. It's what we have and that's what we work with. Um, but sometimes we felt like those families weren't getting the attention they needed when looking for a new family member, which would result in no adoption, um, which is not what we wanted. <laughs> so, with, right. So, with with, um, with families submitting an application first, our adoption counselors are able to make that connection with the family and really figure out what they're looking for. So, if they submit an application for a dog based on its picture on Pet Finder and say that dog's probably not the best fit once you get talking to them, then we can recommend a different dog that's here and say, hey, did you see this one on Pet Finder and would you be willing to meet this dog or that dog? Um, and the adoption counselors like that system. They felt they were providing more for the ex during the experience. She wants to go for her walk yeah. too. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, so at this time, we're going to continue with the adoption, uh, the application first process and scheduling an appointment. That also reduces the amount of people on site and reduces the risk because it is still out there. Even though we're opening it up, um, or the governor's opening everything up, we don't, 
want to just, you know, go back. Yeah, we want to be safe. We want to keep our volunteers safe. We want to keep our adoption counselors safe and our, the public safe. Um, so we have a time. We can clean. We can wear masks when we're inside if we need to be inside. Luckily, it's summertime, so we are able to be outside doing a lot of the adoptions, which is fantastic. She says the shelter is under max capacity, which is allowing for the remaining dogs to get more attention than normal. Typically, um, our facility holds up around 50. If there's litters of puppies, it could up that number. Um, but as far as adult dog goes, 50 dogs is our, is our target number um, to house, and that's max capacity. Hubbard says as far as adoption returns, they're hoping for the best. During the pandemic, fostering was a big push. Um, a lot of, there was a lot of newscasts on, hey, go foster a dog. So that provided the opportunity for the animal controls or other rescues to put those dogs into foster homes, and they don't need us as much at that point. But that's the same sort of situation scenario with adoptions, is that if as those families return to work, are they going to continue fostering, or are they going to bring that dog back, and is animal control going to get overwhelmed with return? being fosters being returned um, it's, it's a touchy situation it's a lot of what-ifs and we don't know um, so yeah we've been handling it that way we have our um, we have a vet that does surgeries here on, on site so spades and neuters have been able to happen again which is great um, and all the dogs are getting their medical and that sort of situation is um, our area is becoming better, a bit more back to normal um, in that. Hubbard says for families who are getting back to work or who need training classes for their pets, places are reopened. I know dog classes have opened back up and there are, um, like the local one is Julie Bennett with Total Dog. She does local um, puppy classes, but she also does in-home training and she is back to work. So she's, she would be a recommendation from K9. Is she in Oxford? Uh, she, I don't believe she lives in Oxford, but she does work out of Oxford. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice, thank you. Yeah, as well as Canine um, Academy. Okay. Canine Academy is also a good one. While some events have been canceled because of the pandemic, Canine Stray Rescue is planning for one more. We have an upcoming, um, our first annual golf outing. Um, it's our 30th year um, being here and being around and being in operation. Um, and it's at Boulder Point on September 20th. You can find out more information on our website or Facebook as well. It is definitely a fundraiser. All the proceeds will go to Canine. We are really hoping to increase our building fund um, to have a facility. It does take maintenance and it does take a lot of money to maintain. So we are hoping to make some pretty big changes if we can reach our goal. <laughs> so this outing is really important to us to be successful. Hubbard says the shelter regularly posts on their website and Facebook page about adoptions and events they have going on, but residents can also contact them another way. Send us an email, um, caninestrayrescue at yahoo.com. So again, the letter K, the number nine, strayrescue at yahoo.com. Um, and we have a volunteer coordinator who will take in all requests. So volunteering, I should, you said without volunteering, but volunteering you can do a lot of things from home as well. So um, as far as volunteers coming to the kennel, we're restricting that a little bit right now just to stay safe during times of COVID. But there are other things that we can use help with that does not entail you coming to our facility necessarily. So if you find yourself with a little extra time, um, we have our social media pages need to stay up to date and positive, our um, bottle and can drives. We have people wanting to donate the cans, but we need to get them returned. So that's something that it can also take place. Um, and then supply drives, we have an Amazon wish list. Um, that you can find um, through Amazon Charities. And we're 501c3, as I'm sure you know, but for the viewers, we are licensed. We're regulated through the Department of Agriculture, um, and we are a nonprofit. So any monetary donations, you can receive a tax deductible donation for. Good story. Hometown Pharmacy has a brand new owner. Again, it's Alexis. Hometown Pharmacy is one of the many Chamber of Commerce businesses affected by M24 construction, but they say despite that, things are still pretty well. Actually, we never closed at all during the 
beginning of the pandemic, um, open regular business hours, but we made a lot of adjustments. And you know, when you asked me that question, I thought, uh, you know, some of it seems pretty normal now. Things that everybody are doing, the masks and the sanitizing and that stuff. But uh, when that started, before the executive order even came out, um, our company um, began figuring out since we're going to be open, what are the best practices? Hometown Pharmacy had to adapt to the regulations in order to comply with state guidelines. Probably the biggest changes for us, we've always done a little bit of curbside, a little bit of delivery, uh, but we immediately started doing a lot of curbs curbside pickup um, to, so people didn't have to come in the store, um, whether they were sick or, or want, stay, trying to stay well. Um, that part all stayed the same. Um, as far as sanitizing, there's a lot of guidelines we follow there. Um, of course, the orders did things for us that, um, and the insurance companies did things to help people limit the number of trips they had to make. Uh, people were, uh, insurances were approving refills early uh, for larger quantities, three month versus one month, um, so that people could come get prepared to stay home. And uh, so we were very busy during that period of time. But staying busy also meant staying safe. From day one, our, our staff requirements um, were, were met to wear a mask. Uh, we didn't require it of our patients necessarily uh, until that became, uh, we encouraged it. We had signage and whatnot. Uh, but once that executive order was given, it uh, was required to wear in all public buildings. Um, I think we've, we've seen the use of masks go up dramatically with that, uh, almost uh, exclusively. Occasionally somebody, we see a lot of people get to the back door and turn around and come back in two minutes later because they left their mask in their car, but um, generally compliance has been real good for that. Tim says he has a lot of pride in his staff and he counts on the experience they have to carry out what needs to be done during the pandemic. The immunization program, which is a big part of our business, uh, flu shots, the shingles shots, tetanus, um, pneumonia shots, um, we did suspend most of that program at the CDC's recommendation for a couple of months. Uh, just the face-to-face -face contact was a uh, concern and uh, we have uh, we started our immunization program now uh, for that time period. The only types of immunizations that we would do were ones that were needed uh, urgently for things like pneumonia vaccines that because of the uh, COVID being a affecting lungs that you want to protect against other um, diseases that present them similarly to that. Uh, but uh, using the proper precautions, the proper types of masks and gloves and whatnot, uh, we are able to uh, do the shingles vaccine, all the vaccines now. And uh, as we're getting into closer to the, the flu season, we're anticipating a, a high rate of vaccination this year for flu and uh, we're preparing for that. Whole Immune is a new product that we have um, that kind of primes the immune system so your body is ready to respond to a virus or a bacterial infection, those kind of things. And uh, uh, the Vivacid is a, like a step up if you're actually starting to feel poorly, you think you're getting a cold virus um, that combines several natural products uh, to help stimulate the immune system to get a real strong response to uh, and hopefully knock out an uh, infection before it really gets started. <laughs> That's not the only natural supplement Hometown Pharmacy has to offer. We started carrying CBD products a while back and uh, we spent a lot of time looking at all the different manufacturers of those products, uh, trying to find a good one that we could trust and we worked with a couple companies for a while but then we found a company, um, Apothecary Heritage, that's here in Michigan. They actually grow their hemp in Michigan. Uh, it's processed and manufactured. We know that each batch they make is assayed so when you get a bottle and it says there's 10 milligrams or 300 milligrams or whatever strength we're talking about, uh, we know that's exactly what's in the package and it's a Michigan product. So. First of all, we're healthcare providers and we need to take care of our patients. At the same time, we're retailers. 
most of our income uh, comes from selling product. And so it's a, a profession that we need to have high standards and ethics in. Uh, we are thoughtful about what products we carry. We want to carry things that we know will help people, that, that people are looking for to, to solve problems. And uh, of course, we, we need to sell things, but not just for the sake of, of, of selling and profit. We want to do it to take care of people. So that's one thought on that. But so uh, there's always the financial end of it. We want people to get a good deal. So we do our monthly promotions through Hometown. Um, we have our Christmas in July going on right now. And uh, just a little take people's mind off the, the heat of summer and whatnot and so we've got those those specials going and uh, trying to participate in some of the promotions that the chamber and DDA are doing and I'd like to thank those people for all their efforts to uh, keep people focused on downtown um, while we work through this road construction issue uh, it's just a little, little bit people get afraid when they see all the road closures here and there but um, most of us have back doors and uh, were accessible that way. We, we've dedicated the, the first hour of each day for vulnerable patients between 9 and 10 um, to shop in the store. Uh, however, we uh, will service any of our customers curbside during that time period, as well as any other time we're open, we, we do the curbside. If people are more comfortable with that, we're, we're happy to do that. And uh, we do have local delivery uh, several times a week. We're open 9 to 7, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 on Saturday. Uh, we are not open on Sundays. <laughs> We uh, certainly appreciate uh, um, our loyal customers who have been with us for years and the new customers that have started this, with us recently. Uh, like any other business, we've had concerns. Are our patients and customers going to get to be able to get to us with the road construction going on? Um, our experience to this point is um, we've actually had a lot of new customers contacting us saying, do you carry this product? Do you have this service? Because, you know, you're closer to me, I can get to you eas easier, so we've been um, pleased that we've been able to help those folks and uh, yeah, we're happy to uh, encourage people to, to shop the other businesses in uh, downtown Oxford as well. Good luck to the new owners of Hometown Pharmacy. Next, our last story, traffic and pandemic from Simple Organics. Again, it's Alexis. Simple Organics in Oxford say they survived the pandemic just fine. But one thing that can be an obstacle is M24 construction. I feel really bad for a lot of the businesses in town because you had the COVID thing. We survived that really quite easily. And then you have the, the construction. So the restaurants in town, I feel really bad for. I live right in the village. I am a big you know, part of this community. I walk through town every single day. Every night I walk around, so I'm always around. And I feel bad for these businesses in downtown. So yes, there's another adjustment. And the construction seems to be a bigger issue for us than, than the COVID thing. I mean, we're still doing really good numbers, but there are, the phone call is all the time. It's like, is it bad? The construction is it backed up? And we're, oh, yes. So we are doing more deliveries. And yesterday we just like tons of curbside stuff. Um, so, you know, people I think are a little bit nervous about the COVID numbers going back up again. So they're not, they're not coming in. We do require a mask in this store. So uh, we don't allow people to come in without it. Uh, no exceptions. Um, and then the, the the construction, yeah, I think that's been a little bit more of an issue for us than, you know, I've had a lot of people very frustrated, especially people who drive long distances who come and see us because we have a lot of our customers that come from like Royal Oak and Madison Heights and Ferndale and they're like, what the heck is this town doing? And I'm like, just smile. Thank you for coming in. And we helped them out with like samples and discounts and stuff. Simple Organics isn't completely affected by construction up front. They say there are detours customers can take for an easier route. I think business is still still going strong. Um, we have slowed down maybe a little bit, but because we have the you know way to get around in the back, it's not just M24. You know you can go through the back. Um, that still allows our customers to be able to come and 
um, get to the store, not too much of a hassle. Uh, we did find that they like maps, so we've been sending maps out on all of like, our newsletters. Um, we have one like a pinned post on our Facebook page that shows all the different alternate routes and different ways they can take care. And that seems to be pretty useful. Like, you know, like me, if I, I would just look on my iPhone on the Maps app, see, you know, but a lot of our older um, customers aren't that tech savvy, so they like just having that map where they can look. Heather Shaleko says the store will continue to update their maps on their website, Facebook, and newsletters until construction is finished. And overall, they're focused on providing good service to their customers. It doesn't really matter to me. You know, like I, all you can do is what you can do in the store. We're just going to provide the best service, the best products, the best knowledge. You know, uh, people who come here, they, they're treated like family. So we're a destination. They'll, they make it here. So it doesn't really matter to us. I mean, like, it, eventually it will end at some point. But I get too frustrated if I sit there and I sit there and I count the days. You know, because then if they're not on time, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're behind. And I get like off. And then I need a stress product from over there. And I'm just not going to do that. You know, I refuse. So I'm just like, nope. I'm just, it, it's done when it's done. Like, what control do we really have over it? The pandemic did bring some good aspects to the business. I think that it's uh, definitely showed us the benefit of having like an online platform to sell our products. So that's something that we are working on as well. So we are trying to bring all of our inventory online and then we will be offering hopefully sometime in the next few months that option as well. Simple Organics does have a website, but right now none of their products are available for purchase on there. We're working out a few kinks as far as like shipping, you know, like some of our stuff like the probiotics, it has to be shipped on ice. So like how that works logistically, especially with COVID, like we, um, a few months ago when COVID was really, you know, the numbers were high and there was a lot of shipping delays with like USPS, just to get a package down to Detroit, it took almost two and a half weeks instead of like a couple days of priority shipping. So, you know, if that was something that needed to be refrigerated, having a delay like that, you know, that can't happen. So there's still some things we've got to problem solve and figure out, but we're doing the best we can. <laughs> but they still have special offers going on. So we have quite a few um, red tag items that are all buy one, get one free. And then we have like our clearance shelf right now. So anyone who comes into the store, spends over $50, they get one of our clearance items completely for free. Current owner Troy Farwell has a big announcement to make. I, as of end of this month, will no longer be the owner. That will be Heather over here, and she will do a little take on some new products that we just brought in. So uh, we'll introduce Heather, and then I'm just going to go back into full-time private practice. Uh, so I'm a doctor of natural medicine, a master herbalist, uh, an Ayurvedic practitioner. So I've been in practice for 20 years, and it was never really my in intention to run a store and be in the store as often as I have. But I feel like there's so much bad advice out there nowadays and I'm always trying to correct that and it's something that it's not really something that we can do in the store. People come up with these major issues that they're getting off YouTube, uh, you know, um, oh, the guy on YouTube told me this or a Pinterest or my neighbor or something. And, or, so I'm always trying to help them out and now it's time that I go back in the, the practice so they have me more availability, I have more availability to them so I can actually help them in that way. Uh, because before I was so busy, I just only saw people one day a week. Now I'm gonna see people five days a week. He'll still be around Around, though. I will be here. I'm going to be kind of like the wellness director, helping Heather with p picking products because of my long background in the industry. Uh, people feel very comfortable with me in the store and what I, you know, have picked for products and selection. And then education is going to be a big part of going forward. So I want to have a lot more classes and for people from women's health is a big area that Heather wants to focus on. So we're going to focus a lot on that. Stress, anxiety, uh, digestion, inflammation. So all kinds of health things. We're going to try to do something almost every month. Uh, sometimes it'll be on Facebook. Sometimes there'll be classes. Sometimes there'll be retreats. Sometimes there'll be, you know, whatever platform we have. But I want to have that is a big platform. So yes, I'll be in doing the education and a lot of the advising for supplementation. As far as body care and skin care, I think she's probably got that covered. Shaleko says she's excited to get started. I look forward to seeing everybody in the store and um, teaching and learning alongside them. Simple Organics in Oxford may have some time before M24 construction is completely finished, but they say they're prepared for it. Reporting in Oxford, Alexis Ware, Oxford Community Television. There you go. So for our report, Alexis War and our photographer, Stephen Brower, and for our editor and production manager, Terry Stiles.
I'm Bill Service. We hope you'll get on our community access.